1975 Sony Trinitron KV1712. The set is in for repair. The symptom is no power. Totally dead. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop it open and we're going to check the bolt that holds the fly back together. I've been working on a lot of these lately and it seems like the bolt that holds the fly back together breaks and the core comes apart and fries the horizontal deflection output and regulator and a whole bunch of stuff. Quick look at the set. Seems to be about a Oh, good 9 out of 10 as far as the cabinet condition and maybe maybe a 9.5 out of 10. This sucker is in nice shape. So I got the original Sony Rabbit Ears KV1712 manufactured 1975. This set is a bit dusty, but it does not look high hour. The dust is just kind of generally like it came in through the back, you know. Um, if it was high hour, it would have a lot of dust in this area, dust in this area. Here's the flyback right here. Uh, deflection board. There's the regulator down there. So let me get my metric Exolite drivers and we will check to make sure that and they look good actually I don't think this is a problem. And yeah, that spacing there in the flyback, that, that has been a big point of topic of discussion because if that spacing is not right, then uh, the tuning of the flyback is not right. And this is something I'm learning about because you really don't deal with broken, physically broken flybacks in other sets. So this is a new to me. But yeah, this this one looks good. Yeah, I'm going to call this good. I Like I said, this has just been this U-bolt right here from here to here. It it wraps around and holds the core together. Yeah, that that actually has quite a bit of spacing in that core. I should measure that, but I, I it's at least a millimeter, I would think. It's quite a big gap. Um, we got two fuses here. Let's check these. Let's see. Uh, that one does not look like it's closed. That one looks open and let's see where is the other one here. The other one is from here to here. That one is closed so it looks like this one's blown 4 amp. That's the main interesting how it's um, Measuring 187 millivolts, like something shorted. A couple notes. Um, a fuse should never blow in a TV. Fuses do not just blow. They're oversized to the point that something else is cremated by the time they go bad. So just keep that in mind. Um, I mean, I guess a surge could hit it from outside and cause the fuse to blow. But in general, fuses don't just blow. It's not, you're not just going to change a fuse and have a working TV. That's maybe one in a hundred. Okay, 2SC 1114. I think that's the regulator. 532 millivolts there. Here we have uh, 069. Let's see what the ohms is there. 110 ohms. That could very well be the um, 
the the big resistor there that's paralleled with the regulator so that might not be shorted yeah you can't just use diode check you got to use a combination of diode check and ohms and kind of know where you're at okay let's check out this one I don't know what this one is it's got two here let's see well that must be the the audio output because when I touch that I hear it from the speaker listen so that must be the audio output this must be the audio output and that's the regulator okay uh, let's check the bridge rectifier which must be these four diodes here they're under these little uh, I don't know shields I guess okay all none of those are checking shorted checking shorted they're all measuring about 500 millivolts which is what they should do on diode check remember diode check applies about three volts and then measures the drop so I'm not seeing anything shorted here. Uh, the filter, possibly. I don't think I've ever seen a shorted filter. I guess if it was needed to be reformed really bad, it could pop the fuse. That's a it's a long shot, but so interesting. I put the meter on diode check across the filter, and it's pretty much sort of reading a dead short. Well, it's reading 127 ohms. That's a hell of a load on a filter. So 128 ohms across 120 volts would be about 1 amp. That would not fry a 4 amp fuse. That would fry the, probably fry the 128 ohm resistor, if that's what we're measuring. Uh, let me... Uh, check the uh, SCR deflection thingy. Okay, I measured this with the fluke, and it's measuring 5 ohms and 15 ohms. Uh, measuring it with the capacitor wizard, which is supposed to be better, because this, like if that thing has an inductor paralleled with it, like the uh, horizontal um, drive transformer, you'll measure through that. But because this is testing at 100 kilohertz, it's better. It, it'll go around the inductor. But man, it's still reading kind of low. I mean, 2.5 ohms. Let me check it from here. This is hard to do one-handed, but one of these days I'm going to hire a camera operator. Hi. Shaky, shaky. Sh measure it from here to here it's not measuring anything and from cathode to gate it's not measuring anything so from anode to cathode it's measuring two ohms I just took this and checked a bunch of these electrolytics which are notorious to be open on these things and I'm not seeing it they all look good so I have a feeling this is a low hour set and um, I guess I could check this one right here. 250 volt. These are the ones that like to go open. Let's see. Try and play the one-handed wonder here. And yeah, even that one's not open. That was just a real quick analysis. I'm going to pull the schematic and we'll come back to this. It's a KV1712. I should have the SAMS photo fact for this. So again, I don't want to power it up until I'm absolutely sure that, you know, what might be wrong or what's going on. I need to check a lot more before I power it up. I've learned with these that uh, brute force costs a lot of money. So you want to be very very careful when powering these up with an issue so I'll get the schematic we'll continue with the diagnosis right now I dug the schematic out on the Sony here 
and I'd like to at least get a diagnosis on this or an initial diagnosis might have to diagnose these things five or ten times before they actually work and don't burn up um, diagnose this before I put in a order to digikey for some other parts for another set I'm currently working on so I was looking at the schematic and it's interesting how this regulates this actually regulates for the low voltage supply off the line it regulates the ground side you can see here's the main regulator and basically these two resistors here are in parallel with each other so that would be 90 ohms and then they're in parallel with the emitter to collector why it's not a like a free floating regulator it has to have a load on it that's close to its desired right so the resistors basically take up 90 percent or 80 percent of the load and then the transistor dials in the other 20 percent so this is the kind of the low voltage section so those are the two resistors in parallel, so I could check those. Well, it looks like both of these are open, if I'm looking at this right. How is that even possible? Even if you put 120 volts across those, it would only be in less than an amp each. I guess it'd be a hundred watts and they're only 40 watt resistors. Okay, let me try clipping on to a different point because those wires are corroded. 115 ohms, which, okay, I'd like to see a little bit lower than that. That's uh, not within 10%, that's for sure. I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull this out and test it even if it's bad or not then what we can do is we can sub in a load like a light bulb and use a variac and test the regulation well this is interesting this is got the Sony part number on it but it is not an original Sony part and the or, the original Sony horizontal output was internally fused and it would go open before the fuse blew the aftermarkets were not um, these are Sony parts here that is aftermarket it's not NTE but it's some other aftermarket so someone has been in here before well the iron is heating up to get that thing out I could take a second to explain what I just briefly covered here if you're not real familiar with electronics. So we got our bridge rectifier here, right? This converts AC to DC. Uh, and then we got our filter capacitor right there. Um, the positive is coming directly off of the B plus voltage. 130 volts is coming directly off the bridge rectifier. The ground side of the bridge rectifier comes down through these resistors to ground. So there's going to be drop across these resistors, right? Depending on what the current is. Ohm's law, 900 milliamps. So there's going to be drop across these resistors. And you could do the math and figure it out. Basically, uh, 900 milliamps across. 100 ohms the regulator is just like another resistor in here but it's variable that way all the power isn't flowing down through the transistor the majority of the power is coming down being diverted off through here like let's say 80 percent and then the other 20 percent is coming through here and this is able to vary that and regulate this voltage thereby regulating and keeping this right on 130 volts so the the resistors take the majority of the load off of the transistor 
if it was a bench power supply you couldn't do it this way but since we since we know what the load of the TV is we can divert the majority of it through resistors rather than all of it through the transistor let's see what we get here this should test as a NPN transistor with a beta of 1 and it does so it is not bad which is good we're gonna leave it out until we confirm what's going on here with the power supply or so what else is shorted so we had 900 milliamps here so we need a, about a 900 milliamp load and a um, variac interesting how this works this is not conventional at all um, you have your horizontal output there that drives into I don't know if you'd call that the flyback transformer but that's not what you think of as a horizontal output transformer that's on the board right here that's that transformer right there and then that drives into this thing right here which we were checking the bolts on and then there's a this uses a tripler huh I don't see a tripler here anyway it gets its B plus right there through that 10 ohm resistor up to this transformer then over to the anode so I'm measuring across the damper here and I've pretty much got a short five ohms in both directions so what's shorted is it the damper that shorted is it the well let me look at this for a minute we could look at it together and be friends so this guy is removed so measuring from here to here I've got a short now this line at the bottom is not ground is it I don't think so it's connected to the horizontal output transformer uh, I mean I guess the diode itself could be shorted five ohms huh it's time to start removing parts I think I'm going to use a capacitor wizard to try and find this short because it's good for low resistance and also it's testing at a hundred kilohertz so that makes these coils appear a lot bigger than they actually are so I'm going to start right there across the damper diode, then I want to try and work my way back uh, from the ground of the damper diode to the uh, other side of uh, L586, then we'll keep working our way back. And we should be able to easily isolate that way. So we'll start at the damper diode here. And we have uh, about three and three quarter ohm. I'm sorry, two and three quarter ohm. And let me see, L586 is that right there on the back. So let's go to the other side of that. And we have over three ohms. So that's, a, that's on the damper side that's on the other side of that little coil so that would suggest that the short is either the diode or it looks like there's a capacitor in parallel with it right there you can see the diode and then there's a capacitor so it looks like the short is closer to the diode than it is the other side of that coil so let me um and you wouldn't be able to determine a difference with a regular ohm meter through that little coil. I don't know what that thing is, a tenth of an ohm, 
Well, there's the damper diode and there's the capacitor. Take your pick. It's probably neither one in reality, but we can hope. And the winner appears to be the damper diode. And there you go, shorted. See how many ohms it measures. A diode that measures six ohms. So that's interesting. Uh, I gotta say, I don't remember ever finding a shorted damper diode and a blown fuse. If that's all that's wrong with this, of course, that's a very easy fix. Um, we go on DigiKey and find us a new modern TO220 style damper diode. That should not be a problem. Um, of course, in later years, they put the damper diode into they built it into the horizontal output transistor so you would never have really known if the damper by itself shorted because the transistor would have just been shorted collector to emitter but anyway yeah shorted damper diode man that would be such an easy clean fix and i haven't even powered it up yet to diagnose it i just detected a short right away uh, across the filter and yeah that would make sense let's see diodes rectifier single here we don't just let's go to something high voltage do 1500 uh, 1500 volts should be enough I would think we'll go we'll just do all of these just go up to 2000 see silicon carbide shot key probably oh no I don't want to do that standard I would think uh, let's see okay let's do apply all see what we get here two amp 1500 volt that's probably enough, isn't it? Let's see if we could get something bigger. Here we go. 2 amp, 1600 volt. I'm sorry, 20 amp, 1600 volt. Let's see what the data sheet says. Uh, okay, I'm going to look through these. I'm sure that would work. How about this one right here? I think that's what we need, right? 10 amp damper diode. Suitable for damper diode and horizontal deflection circuits. I'm sold. Take my money. FFPF 10F150 STU, $1.65. Take my money. Okay, what we're going to do before I order the parts for the Sony Trinitron here is check to make sure the power supply is regulating. I'm going to use a light bulb as a load. I got a 60 watt bulb. I got a Variac. I'm going to come down here. I got the fuse bypassed. So let's just see what happens here. I'm going to see if I can find the. There we go. Creeping up on the Variac. Let's get the meter here to where we can see it. Now we should hit a point here where we start regulating. I'm at 60 volts on the Variac. 90 volts on the Variac. Oh! And we have smoke. What do we have smoke from? Okay, here we go again. You know, I cannot believe I was getting anywhere near 5 amps, 500 watts.
80 volts. Ooh. Here we go. We're cooking with gas right there. R631. Well, that goes to the starter, which I burned it open, whatever it is, so. This does not look like it's regulating. No, this is not regulating. No, this is not regulating. Let me go up to a little bit bigger of a bulb. No, this is not regulating. That's a 100 watt bulb. And as you can see, I'm going from 100 volts. I'm going to just crank it from 100 volts to 130. It should get to a point where it should, you should move the variac and the voltage should not change. This is what smoked is for something called the starter. And that might smoke because it didn't start. It might, this might be designed to supply voltage momentarily until the flyback ramps up. So this is a common thing on these sets that whenever anything shorts in the horizontal it takes out the regulator and the driver. That's why I decided to check. Now I think I created a problem with this. This just feeds this transistor here. And interesting, the regulator transistor, that would be a Sony branded part. That's been replaced too, probably when the horizontal output was replaced. So someone's already been here before, not for a damper diode, but when the horizontal output blew up, it took out that transistor. Yeah, this is a resistor that smoked and it feeds the starter, which supplies these voltages, but I think these voltages are supplied by the flyback once the thing starts, I think, I'm not sure. So we need to check this, 2SD1114, is that what's in there? Yeah. Interesting, they got a same part, just branded Sandkin. Should check this one too, 601. Interesting, the driver is measuring, I mean the regulator is measuring good. Alright, the damper diodes came in. Damper diode, I should say, for the Sony. I'm gonna, I found this little heat sink screw. I'm gonna put some heat sink grease on it. I hope this will fit. I think this thing gets pretty hot. I got the horizontal output transistor back in and I mounted the damper on the back. Um, it's just easier. It's got plenty of clearance. It'll run cooler back here. That is an isolated package transistor so it's not going to arc or short to anything. Totally safe. Totally safe. Set this right in the middle. Um, new fuse is installed and I searched for the proper schematic for this board and I can't find it. I looked in several different models. This is a totally different board. Uh, I can't believe maybe someone took it out of a different model set. I don't know, but I had a friend pull the actual Sony service manual for this set. And it was the board that's in Sam's, not this board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to bring this up on the Variac. I'm going to see if this regulates. If it um, does not regulate, I, you know, we're going to have to troubleshoot it. And I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. I have to start at like 90, 90 volts and clip on to where the voltage comes out of here and, and measure if it's regulating. Because when I was doing the light bulb, this adjustment had no effect. And that's the B plus adjustment. I just tacked a 100 ohm resistor in there. That's the startup one that got fried. Uh, I ordered the appropriate fusible resistors, but they won't be here for a while. Digikey gets here much quicker. 
So that's it. We should have a complete TV now. Now we need to find the point where we want to measure the regulated voltage. Okay, we're at 90 volts here. I have the meter connected. Remember, this thing regulates the ground. So, you know, the pucker factor is high right now. Um, you flip the switch and you just run the risk of doing a whole bunch of damage but here goes and we have high voltage we have 113 volts I'm gonna bring that up on the variac it's supposed to be 130 it looks like it's regulating right at 118 Boy, is that dark. So we're running low on the B+, plus, but it's interesting, this one would not regulate with the light bulb. There we go. Wow, happiness is. Uh, it's a little bit pulled in here, but that's probably because of the low voltage. So let me stick my metal screwdriver in here and run the risk of destroying this whole operation if I could get it in the hole because I'm so nervous. Okay, here we go. There we go. It's supposed to be 130. We'll leave it right there. Okay, so let's see if it's regulating. I'm at 110. Uh, try and get this here. It's going up, going up, going up, going up. I'm at 130 now. Backing off, backing off, backing off. It loses regulation at 105 volts. So good. Okay, and we have a full screen. Wow, do we have any noise here? Slightly warm, slightly warm. So yeah, that, there's definitely some heat there. So, you know, this is old technology right here. That, that's way better. God, I wish I had that resistor. I could button this up. There must be some kind of other feedback loop for the uh, B-plus regulation with this set. Because all the other ones I've done the light bulb trick on before regulated. But they didn't regulate the negative, they regulated the positive, the B, actual B+, plus, not the ground side. But that shouldn't make any difference. I don't know. I'm missing something. I guess not having the proper schematic screws you up. Okay, here's a good test. It's plugged directly into the line. Uh, I'm going to just bang it here. Let's just see. I got it hooked up to the bar generator, the pattern generator. I think that's rolling. going on with that well the pin cushion is trashed on this side um, verticals way overextended let me adjust this I really got it dialed in very nice here got beautiful color so 
I'm gonna wait for that resistor then we'll watch some actual TV on this all right let's finish off our Sony replace the 100 ohm fusible resistor I fused and put it back together and watch some crepey race commercials remember it in the 90s and 2000s and forever volumizing brushes were big they were super big super volumizing sexy, and brushes. it made us think <gasps> my lashes i love all the garbage made up language they use in these stupid things so just listen lid that you couldn't do it on the bottom lashes but we thought just like a hair roller bigger is better right not when it comes to mascara look at this definition that i'm getting i'm doing this live i haven't done this I have not dipped at all. It's gonna give you the perfect amount of formula. But look at this applicator. Okay, I'm gonna do it this way. As you can see here, that's a better shot. It's so slim and it's actually very flexible. It's soft, so if you touch the tip of that mascara brush, the whole thing will kind of wiggle back and forth. All I'm saying is that this collection was made for our benefits here at HSN. We wanna see your volumize before and afters because- I wanna volumize. You don't look younger with this. I don't know, I'm coming to your house and I'm doing it with you because you will, I promise. No, Y'all want your, your amazing brow. You don't have By the, to, you don't no, have to, that's Annie, <laughs> let me it? tell you a secret. <laughs> My producer with the Gimme Brow, she said she bought 10 at a time. She was afraid it. that something would happen and she wouldn't be able to get any, so she was like hoarding her Gimme Brow um, out of oh her house. God, she buys 10 it. at a time. Volume, taming, tinting of your brow. Right. Volume, what volume, is. volume for your mascara. You're getting a full size for a buck. The other one is all yours, free shipping. Brand new duo, 795471. Annie, you and your amazing brow. Oh, yeah, that's that's brow. right. Um, this one's starting to build. I'm gonna do another before I leave. Leave my. Uh, there's blanking going on here area. because we're not I volumizing. Know how much I love all of you. With the you, right brush. So much. Oh my gosh, okay, so... Okay, it's a lot darker out here now, so we can... Right? Caramelization that you would expect... Ooh, caramelization! ...on the barbecue or in a cast iron pan. But this is the magic of our ceramic surface, is that you get great non-stick results, but you also get great browning results. And oh, yes. one of the things that we've done in this set... Now, I would normally sear these... I just want to show you... I love my caramelization. Yeah, many. I am super. First time. I would love for you to keep in touch with me and Kathy and tell us what you think about it. Um, I'm the official Helen Keaty on Instagram and Helen Keaty HSN on Facebook. Uh, also, you can you know talk to Kathy. Facebook wonder with if she uses a we cat box, so many women. litter box. And by the way, you asked for a bigger jar. We heard you. Yes, I need my litter box. I want to be at least almost close to at no additional charge. Give Car Shield a call today before it's too late. Remember, Car Shield calls go farther. Protect yourself now against expensive auto repair bills. Call 800 969 You pop them in, you go to bed, and they... Has that beautiful Sony picture. Nope. Let name, name what copyright does to your channel. 여기서 유명하더라도 다 초청해서 언론 인터뷰 좀 들어보려고 하는 예 어쨌든 제 농담이었고요. 그런데 Hey, it's in 4x3 full screen. 윤석열 당선인이 지금 했던 말 중에 언론들이 가장 주목하고 또 지금 민주당에서 I agree. 자, en sus últimos días, en sus últimos llevará al cielo que es mucho mejor. These are all in 4x3, but they look stretched. That looks copyright flavored. That's undermodulated. It's undermodulated. 
estuvo practicando malos hábitos de vida por lo menos 8 a 10 años. KY. This thing needs to be rescanned. I can see there's a whole bunch of channels missing. Wait a second. How did it go from like channel 20 something to channel 4? Do you have $10,000 or more in credit card debt? Maxed out on your credit cards? Constantly worried about how you're going to make your monthly payments? If so, we have an urgent message for you. Freedom Debt Relief can help you lower your monthly payments. I guess the CRT was in excellent shape. For my foot, I can Here train that 12 linear feet down to four inches. I mean, it's that simple. And that's where the name origami comes from, that ancient Japanese art of paper folding, because you can do this with a rack that is made out of powder coated steel. Now, I want to talk about the elephant in the room for a second before I do anything else with this, Adam. At Christmas time, I shipped a couple of packages, okay? Small ones. They were really expensive to ship, okay? These weigh 30. Voices out of sync with the video. She's got the cigarette gap in between her teeth there. Look at the beautiful green. <clears throat> anyway, I think we can call this, uh, I think we can call this, uh, boy, look at that green. We could call this fixed and fixed good. Finally free, um, what's the next step in my life? You gotta get a birth certificate. You gotta get a social security card. So I was gone for 23 years. So, uh, and, my, and both parents passed away. So these documents were lost. And so I had to go and get them again. This felony is, 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 is over, it's over top of your head, right? Um, not having established credit long enough. So I'm able to, you know, go and purchase a house or get the, the assistance that I need. Um, it's, it's just always a barrier there letting you know that you made a mistake and before this mistake that these barriers are going to be placed in front of you. And Amna joins me now. Amna, you were telling us you've been reporting on issues around incarceration for years. What is it that you were trying to capture with this documentary? Judy, you're absolutely right, and you know better than anyone. Our entire NewsHour team has been covering stories around incarceration for years. But stories of incarceration are actually more familiar to Americans than many people know. I mean, one out of every two Americans has a loved one or know someone who's been incarcerated. But oftentimes, those incarceration stories are about life inside prison or about... That's probably Darn. copyright. You can write and close a gift of $15 or more. Give me an ear. Okay, I think I'm done. Celebrate your bar mitzvah. And if you wish to, of course. Eight lock guarantee. You also get a lifetime coverage guarantee. Pay your premiums. So nothing good. 